Welcome to this three-part educational series titled Hot Topics in Asthma, Increasing Control and Preventing Exacerbations. Each episode in the series will be dedicated to one of the following areas. Assessment of asthma control, updates on clinical evidence surrounding the efficacy of rescue therapies for asthma, and recommendations for as-needed asthma rescue therapy. This third episode in the series will provide the latest evidence-based recommendations for the use of rescue therapies in asthma with the goal of properly implementing newer, as-needed fixed-dose combination therapies to practice. Thank you for joining, and let's get started. I'm Dr. Bradley Chips, the past president of the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology, and medical director of Capital Allergy and Respiratory Disease Center in Sacramento, California. Thank you for joining me, and let's get started. The GINA 2023 guidelines have two tracks for preferred controller and reliever therapy. First, in patients who are already prescribed a inhaled steroid with formoterol, at steps one and two, the as-needed use of, these, of this drug is recommended. At step three, low-dose maintenance therapy with ICS from Motorol are recommended. And as a reliever strategy at steps three, four, and five, the concomitant use of low-dose ICS with from Motorol is recommended. At step four, medium-dose maintenance ICS with from Motorol is recommended. And in step five, of course, then we get into uh, a very serious cases of asthma where a long-acting antimuscarinic can be added to ICS lava and also the use of one of the uh, five biologics in the U.S. can be considered also anti-IgE, anti-IL-5, anti-IL-413, or anti-TSLP. An alternative strategy is outlined in Track 2. These are for patients who are taking maintenance therapy with ICS with a different long-acting beta agonist than formoterol. So if you back up to step one, an ICS is used concurrently when a short-acting beta agonist is taken on an as-needed basis. At step two, regular low-dose maintenance ICS is used, and the reliever strategy again is short-acting beta agonist or ICS short-acting beta agonist. At step three, low-dose maintenance ICS and one of the other LABAs in long-acting beta agonist in the U.S. market. Medium to high dose is step four, and at step five, the same things that I said, track one, a long-acting antimuscarinic and a biologic needs to be considered. So again, although the as-needed formulation of ICS for Motorol used in the preferred approach in Track 1 is not available in the United States, it's only available as a meter dose inhaler. These studies were done with a dry powder inhaler and are currently not recommended by the FDA and the insurance companies in general do not provide adequate number of refills for this strategy to be undertaken in the U.S. That is why the short-acting beta agonist, albuterol, and the ICS, beclomethazone, that is going to be available you know, starting in the first quarter of 2024 is going to be a very important addition to our armamentarium. It's going to allow us then to treat patients at, with track two with currently available drugs in the United States. Now the NA, NAEPP new recommendations that came out in 2020 when, they, when the uh, six questions were answered did give us uh, some additional insights into the uh, uh, NAEPP's recommendations for lever therapy. But still at step one, uh, in contradistinction to GINA, short-acting beta agonist by itself is recommended. At step two, again, low-dose ICS and as needed, short-acting beta agonist can be used. But now the NAEPP has given the option to use 
as needed low dose ICS plus SABA. And you can see that's throughout the step three, four, and five. And as a result then, at least the U.S. guidelines all but, in all but step one are coming in closer alignment with the Global Initiative for Asthma, GINA, in recommending the concomitant use of either a short or long-acting bronchodilator combined with the, the concomitant administration of an inhaled corticosteroid is the appropriate approach for uh, maintenance and reliever therapy. Again, we look then in whom this should be implemented. The reliever therapy that contains low-dose ICS and a rapid-acting bronchodilator, including budesonide from Motorol, baclomethazone from Motorol, which is a, a, a product available in uh, Europe, or again, the albuterol budesonide soon to be released product in the United States can be used as an as needed anti-inflammatory bronchodilator reliever, a very, very important uh, adjunct to our treatment of patients with asthma and something that hopefully will be embraced by the prescribing population and implemented in treatment strategies. The other regimen is maintenance and reliever therapy or MART also known as SMART therapy. This regimen is when a single combination ICS from Motorola inhaler is used every day for maintenance and as needed reliever uh, when asthma symptoms occur. You can use up to, uh, again, with the dry powdered turbine inhaler that these studies were done in, you can use up to 72 micrograms of formoterol in adults and 54 micrograms of formoterol in, in children and adolescents in order to achieve this goal. And again, the ICS Saba inhaler that is going to be available next year is not recommended for maintenance, so cannot be used for SMART or MART therapy. Single inhaler combination use of both maintenance and reliever therapy reduced hospitalizations ED visits and oral corticosteroid as, as compared with fixed dose combination inhalers. So these new inhalers will fit with current treatment recommendations in that the uh, albuterol uh, budesonide inhaler that can be used as needed can be used with any currently prescribed combination therapies in the United States, whether or not the long-acting beta agonist is from Adderall, it can be Salmeterol, it can be Valanerol, and it, it, so the, this new to market regimen for as needed use can be used with any of the combination products currently available in the U.S. market. This allows the, the window of opportunity that Ann Tattersfield described in 1999 where there, are become, there is a drop in peak flow, a slight increase in symptoms. If the combination albuterol uh, budesonide inhaler is used at that time, there is a 27, 26% chance, as seen in the Mandela study, that you will not advance to having a severe exacerbation requiring you, uh, urgent care visit, uh, ED visit, hospitalization, and oral corticosteroid use. So we have to use shared decision-making in our practice. It is important that all providers listen to their patients, understand their patients' concerns about the activity of their disease, the medications they're taking, and the side effects that the medications may have. We have to be able to respond to their questions and give them answers that make sense. Patients are afraid of medications. Patients, as I've said, view asthma as an episodic disease. And they have to be counseled that asthma is a persistent disease, just as hypertension, diabetes, ulcerative colitis, inflammatory bowel disease, etc., rheumatoid arthritis, all are very 
persistent diseases, so is asthma. It may be quiescent for a period of time, again, because asthma has a waxing and waning course. That is why the albuterol budesonide combination to help block the inflammation and bronchoconstriction that is occurring as one is progressing toward an exacerbation that has to be stopped. We have to engage patients in the frequency of the use of their medications to make sure it will, what we're prescribing will fit into their lifestyle. We can't prescribe something three or four times a day for a busy person who can only take medicine once or twice a day. Again, we have to explore their concerns about the side effects of these medications and respond to their questions and set for them re re realistic expectations for control of their disease and prevention of side effects. The top takeaways from this program are that we have to have the most efficient intervention for our patients as they begin to have symptoms proximal to an exacerbation. And that's done with the albuterol budesonide combination therapy that will be available in the United States because we are currently not allowed to use formoterol budesonide inhaler as both fixed and reliever therapy in the United States, although we all realize that's done by many providers across the country. It's not FDA approved. So we have to do the next best thing we can do, which is the new inhaler that's coming out that I mentioned, that is compatible with all of the long-acting beta agonists in the U.S. market and can be used in addition to the um, preparations that our patients may be taking because that is primarily driven by formulary considerations. Thank you for joining me for this Hot Topics program. You can view other episodes from this series on the landing page. For additional CME opportunities, clinical resources, and links to patient education materials, please visit us at www.exchangecme.com.